Today I'll be showing you how to get 3D city data from Tokyo faster than you can say arigato gozaimasu. Let's hop right to it. This data is provided by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. I believe that there is some public city data for New York as well as some other major cities. I just had this long trip in Japan and I want to use this data for some pieces that I'm making. You can use this for personal or commercial projects as well. And because my thing is Blender in point clouds, I'll be showing you exactly that. But this data could be used in any 3D software. And the sponsor of today's video is actually myself. If you want to learn more about my process of creating point clouds, you could check out that course and the entire workflow. I have it down below in the description. But without further ado, let's hop into it. When we click on this link right here, we're going to the Digital Twin 3D Viewer. They do recommend a slightly powerful computer, but if you're hopping in here and watching this video, I assume you have at least a decent computer and def decent graphics card. And one thing I actually forgot to mention is I discovered this through a Twitter post. I mean, it's called X now, but pretty much someone was doing the same thing, bringing point clouds into Blender from this Japan 3D data. And just a quick plug, if you want to see all the like, kind of like super technical stuff that I've been paying attention to. You can also follow me on X. I post a lot of interesting technical stuff that just catches my eye. And I'm actually feeling Shibuya today. So let's go explore the map data. You see that we have Tokyo as well as two other prefectures in Japan, but we're focusing on Shibuya and we want the 3D digital map if you're going for a mesh. If you're going for a point cloud, you're gonna go for point cloud data, but there is a lot of other valuable data in here that you can explore. There is some train station models as well as like, even there was like a scan of a bathroom. There's a lot of cool stuff to explore in here. You could just check it out and some stuff that maybe I'm not even aware of, you can find some pretty cool stuff in here. But for this 3D digital map data, let's say we're going into Shibuya Ward and we want the architectural model. We just press the plus button right here and let's hop into ideal zoom so we get the good view of it. And you can see that we have this 3D model of Shibuya, but right now it's in this web interface. Let's also show it with textures. So when you bring this into Blender, this is what you would get. The only issue is that this comes in the strange file format. So the way to bring this into Blender is you actually have to translate to English first and you want to download the city GML file, the V4, and you want to process that file with the Plateau GIS converter. I'm not gonna make the focus on this video, but if this video does do well and I get a lot of questions on how to set this up, then I'll make a separate video on it. But we're focusing on point clouds for this video. So let's hop to point cloud data. Let's get the display because this just shows pretty much like the preview 3D model and let's pick Shibuya like that. And I'm actually gonna get rid of the architectural 3D model so we have a better view of the point cloud. Let's do high quality because I have a decent computer and large. And you can see now we have pretty much like just a giant point cloud of all of Shibuya. I find that actually also I do prefer the point cloud model because you are getting more accurate detail. This is actual like real life scanned data versus the meshes that are just 3D modeled and texture projected. So you are getting stuff like trees as well as additional elements in this data set right here. One caveat I noticed with this data set is because it was captured with aerial LiDAR, you can see that actually if you look at the buildings, there are some gaps in the data set. Pretty much on like each floor, you notice this like noticeable gap that's pretty much an artifact of the scanning process. Some taller buildings do have this a little bit more noticeable, but I think this is a look that kind of does help the aesthetic a little bit. But anyway, this is a shit ton of points. The reason why they have this preview model, you can already see my computer struggling a little bit with it, is because the actual data is so much more detailed than this. If we go to explore map data, and instead of just the display, we go to download. Now we can pick out the individual parts of Shibuya that we want to download. And now from here, you see that we have all these individual tiles that we can pick and download. Let's look for Shibuya Crossing. And after a bit of hunting, I just lost it, but it 
is around here. All right, so after a bit of hunting, I did find it. Here's the tile. Actually, it's like kind of like at the intersection of these four tiles. So let's actually download all four of these tiles right here. And while that's downloading, the program that I'm going to use to transfer these files into Blender is a software called Cloud Compare. If you're into industrial point cloud scanning for architecture or construction, you might be aware of this piece of software. It's not necessarily for creatives, but essentially I just use it to convert the LAS file into a POI file that Blender can read. I'm not aware of any Blender plugin that can automatically read the LAS files. If there is, then you can save time with that. So I just want to hop in while editing this video. What if you want other cities? How about more advanced point cloud methods? So in my course, I actually have a walkthrough on how to take data from Google Maps and how to make it compatible with point clouds, as well as more advanced lessons such as volumetric capture workflows. If you made it this far, I'm assuming you're interested in this type of stuff and I don't want to make this whole video about it. So if you want to check out more about it, just check the link in the description and you can see more about my point cloud course. But that being said, let's get back to the video. So I already have cloud compare installed. So let's open it and we'll take our four last files and just drag and drop it and just hit apply all and yes to all. Pretty much I don't really care too much about real world scale because even when you bring all this data into Blender and you're working with real world scale, it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's better to scale all this data down, but you can see we have it right here. You can actually view it, rotate it around, and if you hold the Alt key, you can change the point size. So this is a great way of previewing the point cloud. And with Cloud Compare, you can actually clean up point clouds. And what we'll do from here is we'll select each individual tile and we'll save each one individually as apply file. I do want to say that this can get quite heavy on lower spec systems. So if your computer can only support one tile at a time, just start with one tile. You don't need to do four. And we'll save in binary format and just repeat the process for the other four tiles. So once we have those four tiles, we can hop into Blender. Let's just drag and drop these ply files. Might take a second because we're dealing with millions of points. I'm actually going to join them all together. So we are working with one object and also scale it down to maybe 0.1. So it's not so crazy. Also, the origin is all the way over there and I need it here. So let me just go into edit mode and select a vertex and then we'll do cursor to selected and then from here set origin to 3d cursor and then we can bring it back to the origin so now we have the this part of shibuya inside blender and we could do a whole lot of different stuff my typical ply file workflow for point clouds in blender is new geometry nodes and mesh to points we can't use distribute points on faces because there are no faces to distribute points on and we have 25 million points and this data actually does come with some additional attributes that you can use including scalar time which can be used for a pretty neat scanning animation as well as some other attributes i'm not entirely too sure what they are but as creative technologists know when you have different data you can make nice art with it so to reduce the amount of points, let's actually grab a random value and plug that in to Boolean and let's set it to something like 0.1. So we don't have like an insane amount of points. This is a lot more manageable for Blender. And on top of that, let's also apply the scale. And now the points are of a decent size. We don't really need to change the radius of them. But from there, let's set a material, grab the material. Let's just grab the default material. And what we want to do is grab the color attribute. So let's search for call and plug it in. And now we have this point cloud data imported into Blender. I'm not gonna make this a complete point cloud animation, but let's make it look nice just for the video. RGB curves, even with my own photogrammetry scans that I do, I notice that a lot of the textures are low contrast and I really like to bring that up. So let's just do the standard S curve to boost the contrast and make it a little bit more punchy as well as a huge saturation value node. And I like to set the saturation to something like 1.5. 
this looks a little bit more true to life like this right here just looks all washed out compared to my adjustments and then on top of that metallic to one and roughness to 0.3 is my signature way i like to shade my point clouds and if you notice up until now how it's so fast i'm actually using ev to render the point clouds this is actually just the ev preview even though it says cycles here but a common misconception i get is that point clouds takes very like are very resource intensive and yes they are to an extent but if you use a modest amount of points, they render incredibly fast. Let's actually just hop into cycles and grab a sky texture. And you can just see when I'm moving around the viewport, I have denoiser on, so let me turn it off in the viewport. I'm pretty much flying around, I'm screen recording, I'm also processing something else in the background. You can just see how snappy it is and render how quick it renders. Let's add a little bit more sauce to this. I'm actually gonna do another random value just to have different sized points. So the radius is 0 0.05. So let's do 0 0.03 to 0 0.065 and plug that into the radius. Now each point will be slightly a different radius. I'm gonna actually make a slight adjustment lower it a little bit so from all this stuff here shibuya crossing is actually right here and actually i'm gonna push the points a little bit more my computer can handle it so i'm just gonna get bring back all the points and actually grab a math node set to multiply and do this so we just have the entire point cloud because i really do think that denser point clouds do look nicer but they do have their place all right so right now we're working with 25 million points there is a little bit of lag but you can see now we have pretty much an entire point cloud of the area of shibuya and we can do whatever we want with this now we can add some characters to the scene we can displace the points like how i do in my other animations but with 25 million points that'll be crazy uh you won't get real-time viewport performance so I'll leave that displacement stuff for a different project, but what I've been experimenting now is with adding characters and additional elements to my animation. So you'll see a lot more of that. But also, what else do I wanna say? Before I finish this video, let's actually just lower the sun angle and change the ozone, and we can get a different look out of this as well, just like that. I like the lighting here more and then we can just add a volume though you do have to have the volume be very subtle otherwise it's just going to turn into a render hog but it really does improve the look and this is a similar shot that i did to one of my most recent artist interviews of benjamin knock it was just a camera animated and moving th through the city and that's as simple as just adding a camera bringing it up changing the resolution and then we can just move it and then we could just place two keyframes first keyframe here go to the end and then do a second keyframe let's say here like that and make it linear and then now we just have an animation of a camera flying through a point cloud city so this is a great way of getting a documentary level b-roll just very easily and then for that like radius growing type shader that's just one of the 10 of my point shaders if you want to learn more about that i'll also leave the link below for my shader pack the premise for making this video is just to show off the japan 3d model assets because there's no point of gatekeeping it and i haven't really seen anyone on youtube talk about it you just go on the website and you can grab pretty much any part of japan and bring it into 3d software and i'm personally using it for my point cloud stuff and i'm looking forward to doing some more edits with this i don't want to drag out this video any longer if you want to learn more about my creative journey what i'm doing with all this animation stuff be sure to subscribe and if you have any suggestions on videos on specific things that you want me to cover just let me know in the comments i'm always looking for new ideas on what people want to see from me that being said, you made it to the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.